works on paper are very susceptible to light and humidity. So we limit the display to an average of four months a year. And when they're not on display, they're here and groups or individuals can come in and see them. So around us in these boxes, we have about 12 to 15,000 works, which we store flat. There's about 10 works in each box as we go around the room. And we can pull the works out of the boxes and bring them out to the table to be viewed and analysed. And then, of course, they go back away again. But what's wonderful about having a big collection is that you can actually see how an artist works. You know, you don't just see the final image, you get to have a look at drawings that they've discarded and things like that so that you get almost closer to the artists. You get to see how they came up with their final images. There's a wonderful cat here that you might notice that's been totally scared by what's happening on the ship. And as was very typical of David Jones, um, he includes animals in practically all of his um, works that we have here. Someone's nicked my kickstool. I can't find it. This is one of three sketchbooks that we have um, by David Jones. You'll see that they're very much homemade sketchbooks, just sheets of paper folded over with a couple of stitches down the side. And this is him researching for a commission that he had received. He trained as a printmaker. He was um, a very renowned wood engraver. And we're very lucky to have these original wood blocks in our collection. And you can see how some of the animals that he's painted in the zoo end up directly in these images. So as well as the watercolours and uh, the writing, he was also an incredibly skilled printmaker. And we also have the prints from the blocks. So these are the original prints that David Jones produced for a commission. And if I put these side by side, you'll see that this is the block from that print, but obviously in reverse. The initial idea for in parenthesis was that it was going to be drawn or that it would be a series of prints. But in the end, only two images materialised, these two. We have the frontispiece here and the tailpiece. And these two images were both published in the first edition of the book. The frontispiece is obviously very detailed and there are lots of references to the First World War throughout the image. Not only the First World War, he also references other parts of his life and other stories and mythology in it. So there are trees and ponies that actually we think probably came from his time in Wales, from much influence from the Capilla Finn years when he was living in Wales with the Gill family. And he actually gets engaged to Eric Gill's daughter Petra. And we have this wonderful portrait here of uh, Petra. It's one of a number of portraits that he did of her. They were engaged, I think, for a number of years, but they never got married. But they stayed firm friends and he continued to draw her. So what's wonderful about having such a large collection of works by a single artist is that we can really follow their career right from the start to the end. And you see that development of how their style changes and what influences them. This charming work is simply called The Maid at 37 from 1926 and this is David Jones drawing the view from his window while he's staying with his parents in Broccoli. It's quite a funny work in a way with the maid hanging out of the window rather precariously washing the windows but as well as that you get these wonderful curves throughout it and that's a feature that you'll find in a lot of his works, this re repetition of patterns and shapes. Mm -hmm. This is very typical of the back of Jones's work. All curators love looking at the back of things as well as the front. And he does write a lot of information on the back of his. He dates them. You'll see that this is Jones handwriting. Sometimes you just get notes such as here where they've been crossed out. But it's very good because it gives us lots of information. Jones draws whilst he's in the army, but then when he comes back to Britain at the end of the war, he goes back to his artistic studies. And what we find from quite an early point in his career is that there are references to his experience in the First World War. You'll notice in the Roman soldiers that they're not dressed as Roman soldiers. They're in fact dressed more like First World War soldiers and uh, they're wearing the steel helmets. And this soldier has the lieutenant bands on his arm. So he's actually mixing imagery of Roman legends and uh, his own personal experiences and bringing them together. 
So I very much come at David Jones from the visual arts, so it's been wonderful to work with WNO to really bring the literature alive and look at his art from a different point of view. So I'm fascinated to see how it all comes together in the new production of the opera.